Hello, greetings from Christine. In today's session, we're going to look into the effect of financial leverage on the company's net income and return on equity measures. The prerequisite for today's session is an understanding of financial leverage. Leverage in general is defined as any mechanism that can magnify your gains and losses. In terms of financial nomenclature, leverage refers to the usage of any fixed cost. In case of a financial leverage, that refers to the usage of fixed financial cost, such as payment of interest on a debt. Notice, unlike equity, a firm is mandated to produce fixed payment as interest payment on the outstanding debt. How does your financial leverage impact the two measures? Net income is defined as the final income for a company, which is your revenue minus total cost. The total cost may include operating cost as well as financial cost. Increase in financial leverage for a company will actually decrease net income. That is because the financial cost would increase and therefore the total cost will increase and that would proportionately reduce the net income. Therefore, the impact of financial leverage is an increase in financial leverage would decrease net income. Return of equity is defined as net income divided by average total equity. Notice numerator is a income statement measure and denominator is balance sheet measure and therefore we take average of beginning and ending average equity so that we could be able to compare these two. An increase in financial leverage increases the return on equity measure. Let us see an illustration that solidifies our understanding. We have a company, Great Everest Infrastructure, which has a net revenue of 20 million. Its operating profit is given as 10 million and tax rate is also provided. It has absolutely no debt and 20 million in share is outstanding. If the company had actually borrowed debt at 10 million at the rate of 8% per annum to buy back the number of shares, in these two scenarios, let us compare the net income and return on equity. That is, you have two scenarios, one where the company has absolutely no debt at all and the second scenario where the company has actually issued debt to buy back some shares from the market. In scenario one, when there is no debt, the operating profit is 10 million which is provided. There is no additional interest expense, therefore the, in the earnings before tax would be 10,000. Once you charge 40% tax rate on the earnings before tax, you get the net income which is earnings before tax minus tax as 6 million. The book value of the equity in the above question is 20 million shares outstanding and therefore the return on equity which is net income by book value of equity comes around 0.3. In the second scenario where the firm has issued 50% of its debt, let us see what happens. The operating profit is given as 10,000 sorry 10 million interest expense on the debt is given as 8% on outstanding debt in our case there were 10 million debt therefore we come around 800,000 as interest expense the earnings before tax would be operating profit minus interest expense which will be 9.2 million a 40% tax on above would result in 3.68 billion as tax Reduction of EBT minus tax would give you a net income of 5.52 million. Notice how your net income is less in the second case because of additional debt burden which translates in additional interest expense. Since the firm uses this money to buy back a number of shares, it has effectively reduced the outstanding number of shares from 20 million to 10 million. A return of equity which will be net income by book value of equity would give you a higher measure of return on equity because of much lower value of equity. Therefore, as we have seen in this example, a firm structure 
when it incurs additional debt decreases the net income but increases the return of equity as compared to a case when there is no debt let us summarize what we have learned the effect of financial leverage on a company's net income and return equity could be summarized as as the number of as the amount of financial leverage increases the net income for the company decreases however the return on equity for the company increases let us try to answer this question based on our understanding in the session so far which of the following statements is correct greater is the proportion of fixed financial commitments for a firm lesser is the financial leverage the statement is false because greater the proportion of fixed financial commitments such as interest payment on a debt higher is the by definition the financial leverage of the firm choice b increase in the degree of financial leverage decreases roi and increases net income this choice is also incorrect because higher the degree of financial leverage the net income decreases because of additional interest cost and return on equity increases because much higher value of equity because the firm can use debt to actually purchase back equity therefore the right choice in the above question is choice c that's all for me thanks for your time